Now then, people, and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It is Wednesday, the 8th of September, and it's time for another episode of the Daily Leeds, your one-stop shop for all your Leeds United news, both at Ellen Road and in and around Thor Parch. Uh, today is Wednesday. I'll be going to Leeds a little bit later on, actually, to be fair, to see uh, the Phil Hay book launch, uh, a Q&A with Bryn Law and Phil Hay at Leeds Town Hall. If you are going to the event tonight, please hit me up because I'll be there. I'll be on my own. I need some friends. Reach out to me. What that also means as well, guys, there may not be a daily leads tomorrow morning because I won't get back till actually midnight. I'm mega bus. I'm a poor guy. I'm getting the mega bus there. Finishes at half nine. Mega bus back. Don't get back till midnight. Okay. But what I might try and do is, is, is maybe do a little bit of a vlog style video and just get them little nuggets that come out of the Q&A between Bill and... Uh, between Phil, who's Bill? Between Phil and Bryn. Um, so, yeah, watch this space. If not, you know why. If it is something, then I'll do it. Um, but, yeah, listen, that's enough waffle from me. I just want to keep you updated so you're not like, where's the Daily Leeds, Joe? What's going on, Joe? Um, that's where I'll be. And if you are going to, and it was beautiful, book on chat Leeds Town Hall, please do reach out. Let's meet up. Uh, I'll be in Leeds from about 6 o'clock. doesn't start till 7.30. So if you're about, give me a shout. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. If you're about, give me a shout. Love that. That's enough waffle and tripe from me. Let's get into today's video. And this is the moment when I take a stand so guys, we're going to start with the man of the moment. I, the guy that I just salivate over daily it is, of course, Dan James. He's been doing an interview in the Telegraph speaking about his due d diligence that he's done on Leeds United. Of course, he's away with Wales, had a stellar performance against Belarus the other day. He's been speaking with Tyler. Tyler Roberts, of course, also a Welsh national, says, um, I've been speaking with Tyler and he's learned so much that maybe it's not even him being told. It's kind of sessions he's done. Um, just learning from speech, not just learning from speech. It's visually what he's learned on the football pitch. And Dan James says, it's my time. I'm 23 now, going on 24. But at the end of my career, towards the end, I still want to keep learning every day. And I think it's important to do that. You know, he said, I've set myself goals after completing this £25 million move. I've got to keep giving my all. I obviously have my own personal goals, which I keep to myself but I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to learn and get to learn the new system and hopefully contribute to the team. I'm, I'm assuming then goals is like 25 goals per season, something along them lines. Um, but listen, he, he made a vow as well. Um, he made a vow as he admitted his biggest mistake whilst at Manchester United. I mean, his biggest mistake was going to Manchester United, let's be honest. Um, but by in his own words, he says, look, I think everyone goes through part of their career where you don't realise something is happening until you look back and have good people around you to analyse it, he told the Daily Tele Telegraph. And that's true in life. You know, I can be down. And then when I'm out of it, I then go, wow, I was down. Good few while there, you know. And you don't even realise sometimes when you're in that rut. And that's what he's speaking about, just in his playing career. He thinks everyone goes through it. And he said, you know, he, he said, I started thinking too much, you know. Um, I started looking at other individuals that were getting in the side and what does he do that I can't do? Rather than just thinking about his own game and being himself, he said it got to the point where I was being a bit safe in games, you know. He says, I got bought for my direct play, running in behind, running with the ball, trying things and not being afraid to lose the ball. But slowly, I started to come away from that and play a little safe. Too in fear, man in fear of upsetting that fan base, you know, that we're throwing pelters at him left, right and centre at such a young age. I think the Leeds United fan base are a forgiving bunch. And as long as you give 100%, which I've no doubt that Dan James will, we're on board with it. We're on board with it. And all these things that he, he said he was initially bought for, the direct play, the running in behind, running with the ball, trying things, taking plays on, this is what he will thrive doing at Leeds United and under Bielsa. Mark my words, we have got a gem in Dan James, you know. He, he, he went on to say, when I stepped back, it was remembering to be direct, to be that person. Safe is dangerous in the position that I play. Don't need to be safe. It's actually worse to be safe, you know. He says, I'm not there to do that. You're there to score goals and make assists and run yourself into the ground on and off the ball. That's what he did for Wales against Belarus. 
that's what he'll do at Leeds United under the tutelage of Marcelo Bielsa. You know, he will go from strength to strength. I fully, fully believe in that. I can't wait to see him in a Leeds United shirt. Maybe he gets his start on Sunday because we're still yet to hear what's going to happen with Rafinha. Um, so the European Club Association Chief Executive Charlie Marshall has actually done an article in the BBC um, and said that, you know, the six Premier League clubs who refuse to release their players for Brazil World Cup qualifiers need to be told within the next 24 hours if they are suspended for the weekend. You know, you've got Liverpool trio, Alisson, Fabinho, Firmino, Man City have Edison and Gabriel Jesus, Chelsea have Thiago Silva, Manchester United have Fred, we have Rafinha and Everton have Richarlison. Some big names there, of course they are, they play for Brazil. And they still don't know if they're going to be able to play at the weekend. Now we know Wolves, Newcastle, Watford and Blackburn all lose players this weekend because they've had complaints from the Chilean, Mexican and Paraguayan associations, okay? So like, uh, you know, you've got uh, players at these clubs clubs that play for these nations, they've made the complaint to FIFA, which means they will not be able to play for five games. But we still don't know what's going on with the Brazilian players, which seems a little bit strange, you know? So we still don't know. Now, as I said, Charlie Marshall said, we need to know within the next 24 hours if these Brazilians can play or not, you know? He said Liverpool and other clubs like Leeds United need to know if they can play them, you know? If FIFA is going to sanction the clubs, they need to tell them ASAP. Of course they do, because it's preparations for the weekend. Players will start returning soon enough. You know, England play tonight. You know, I would have done a watch long, but as I said earlier, I'm at the Phil Hay event. Um, so we need to know, and I'm assuming by tomorrow we will know whether or not Rafinha is going to play at the weekend. And if he doesn't, maybe that means Dan James starts. But I'd rather Rafinha be playing. It was quite interesting as well. Andrea Radrazani spoke on the matter. Um, and we know that Rafinha got called up for his first you know, for the first time in the Brazilian squad, he was affected by the situation. And Rad Razani actually spoke to him and said, we invited him to make the decision. It was all on Rafinha. And he decided not to go, you know. And I think that's fantastic. You know, Rad Razani said he showed great respect for his club and the Premier League in giving up his opportunity to play for his country. Not just any old time, for the first time. For the first time. Now, a lot of players would have said, nah, I'm going. I'm going. I need to prove myself on the international stage. I want to play for my country. And he made the decision. Not the club, not Bielsa, not Rad Razani, Rafinha himself. That guy's dedicated to the cause, and I absolutely love that. Um, so, well done, Rafinha. And I hope, I hope within the next 24 hours, Brazil say, look, we ain't got a leg to stand on with what happened with the Argentina-Brazil game and all that sort of stuff. And hopefully they won't make a complaint and they will play. But then at the same time, will Wolves, Newcastle, Watford and Blackburn all have something to say? Do you know what I mean? Because they're being, I guess, you know, sanctioned. And the Brazilian FA, if they don't make a complaint, these clubs that I mentioned right at the start won't face any sanction. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, just a little bit of transfer stuff now. Danny Mills, uh, the fountain of all knowledge, um, has come out and said that Leeds United fended off serious interest in Calvin Phillips and Rafinha this summer, worth around £50 million each. That's according to him. I don't know what information he's privy to. Probably knows more than me because he's closer to the game, but £50 million seems a little bit cheap for both of them. So if indeed there were bids on the table for that, I'm glad the club have knocked them back. Um, and also Paul Robinson, another one, another one, uh, Fountain of Knowledge, has said that Rangers will now be able to keep Ryan Kent away from the clutches of Leeds United. I don't think that's any sort of um, amazing news or you need to know knowledge of that. I think the fact that we've now acquired Dan James means that Ryan Kent won't be coming to Leeds in the uh, distant future. I, I can't see that happening. Um, so, yeah, I agree with Paul Robinson's statement with that one. Um, we spoke the other day about international footballers and players doing it on the international stage. Well, of course, Leeds United loanee Alfie McCalmon um, got his first senior call-up for the Northern Ireland side. He believed he was going to the under-21s and then he got the call-up and he played his, and he got his first start. By all accounts, had a had a great game. So, Graham Smith did an article and I asked Graham Smith the question, do you think his time is up at Leeds or will he get a chance? And Graham Smith responded with saying, you can never rule anything out, but he'll have to do what Ben White did and show he can handle the step up to League One with real comfort. He did well in League Two at Oldham. He's now moved up a level to League One. 
Can he do it at that level? He did also caveat it, Graham, by saying that Leeds would have listened to permanent officers the offers this summer. So he has his work cut out. So if someone would have come in and said, we'll take him off your hands for X amount, a million, they'd have, they'd have said yes. So at this stage in time, Alfie McCalmont is available. We know he's out on loan because there wasn't any permanent deal offered. But if Alfie McCalmont does well in League One and continues to do it on the international stage, there is a player there. There is a player there. Um, I want to know in the comments, guys, do you think Alfie McCalmont can book the trend? He seems closest to for me. I know people will mention Borges, etc. Even Paveda, I'm still, for me, jury's out. That's just my opinion. I keep saying it. But Alfie McCalmont seems the closest. We know other lads have gone out on loan and they have been sold. Got Susanna, etc. Jordan Stevens being one. Um, but Alfie, the fact that he's getting an international call up, I know at Northern Ireland, but Stuart Ellis plays for Northern Ireland, do you know what I mean? And he's playing for Leeds in the Premier League. So, you know, why why not? And I hope, I hope he does book that trend. But let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Will Alfie McCarmel play it for Leeds United? And just to finish, a little bit of fun, guys. 21-year-old Kelvin Yeboa, that's right, Yeboa, nephew of Tony Yeboa, has been representing Italy in this uh, this group of under 21s Euros game, um, he's got six goals and four assists in nine games for Stum Graz this season. That's six goals and four assists in nine games. Uh, he could have played for Ghana, but has decided to choose Italy. Do we have another Haaland on our hand? Is is Yeboah Kelvin Yeboah another Haaland? Do you know what I mean? And if he is, Leeds United get there now. Go to Stum Graz. Put the money on the table. You know, we, we were hearing about Haaland long before he had them big money moves. Do you know what I mean? So let's not wait about on this one. Let's just go and get your boa. Six goals and four assists in nine games for Stumgratz. Playing for Italy in the under-21s as well. Your boa, Kelvin, oh, it would just be beautiful. <laughs> Kelvin, your boa, Erling Haaland. Let's make it happen. Um, I wonder if Radaby's got any kids that are going to be playing anytime soon. David Batty, let's have it. Let's have them all back. <laughs> but yeah, Kelvin Yeboa, one to watch. Keep your eyes on that. But listen, that was your daily leads. Thank you so much as always for watching. I love putting these videos together. Remember, I will be at the Phil Hay um, book event, Bryn Law Q&A on Wednesday. So it might mean that you might not get a video Thursday morning. Um, but I will try to do something. You know, I always will. I'm dedicated to the course, to the channel, and to you guys that watch. So thank you, as always, for watching. Smash a like on it, subscribe, comment, and hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in a bit. Peace out. Leeds, Italy.